it's up to our player to decide what level we are going to take on, right? What level dungeon we're going to take on. It's not, it's not the character's decision to, to do that. It's the player's. It's not to say that our innermost player won't choose a level 100 dungeon when we're level 90 or level 95. It's not to say that we're, we won't be pitted against a task that's challenging, that's going to stretch our limits. But we are never going to be given a challenge or a task that we cannot overcome. If we do not face it or we do not overcome it, it's because of our own shortcomings. It's because of our own failures. Our own failure to take direction and our own failure to follow the will of our being, our own failure to follow our bliss in the midst of the challenge. We give in to our egos. We give in to fear. We give in to anxiety. We give in to panic and anger and frustration and despair and, and weakness and all the rest of it. We are not qualified to make these decisions. So don't. Don't make them. You know, let these decisions be made for you and follow them. We're characters in a game. So by following your bliss and exploring your abyss, you always need to have in the back of your mind, what would my innermost do? Why did my divine mother set this up this way? What am I here to gain out of this? It really is very advantageous to be humble and to pray and ask for help and remember that I'm not qualified. I'm just a character. I'm just an AI, NPC. Without my innermost being, I'm an NPC. So forget all of the, you know, uh, grandiosity, the visions of grandeur and delusions of grandeur that you that 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 we might have it's called mystic pride that we're this spiritual or that spiritual or oh we're going into the abyss we're going on the journey and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that no I'm going to obey I'm going to follow my bliss I'm going to listen I'm going to be aware and and, and read the signs and the symbols and have one eye in and one eye out I'm going to be watching and waiting and listening for the directions to come from within because I am not qualified to defeat this dungeon level. And I'm not qualified to defeat this boss. The best that I can do is ex extend as much willpower as I can to uh, prevent myself from being overwhelmed and being possessed by whatever demon that I'm fighting in that particular moment. So I have to be in control of myself. That's my job. And not to allow myself to be overrun. But over and above that, I step aside and I get myself out of the way of myself. And I call upon my higher self to work through me to defeat the demons that I need to that that I'm that I'm facing or or overcome the challenges and overcome the obstacles that I'm facing down in the depths of the dungeon, in the depths of, of, of the abyss. Because let's face it, we, we're not qualified to go into the depths of the subconscious mind armed only with our, with, with our rational mind and our own egos. How do we, how do we expect to, to get anywhere? How do we expect to make any progress that way? And yet, this is exactly what the vast majority of so-called spiritual people out there are doing when they talk about their positive thinking and all this other nonsense. They're robbing Peter to pay Paul. They say, oh, well, you just have to avoid negative feelings and negative thoughts and negative emotions. And you power through with positivity. And they don't realize they're just creating a demon. They're just becoming deeper and deeper into Has Hasna Musan, right? with a split center of gravity and they're shoring up and they're 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 giving more power to the false self when they do that so so going into the abyss and facing our demons facing challenges 
in the dark night of the soul, this is not as straightforward, just as following your bliss is not as straightforward as it may seem. The, the enemy, the adversary, is always there to challenge us on every level, in every aspect. And remember, the adversary is our opponent. They're not our enemy. They are there to make us a better chess player. But on the board, their pieces are ruthless. They use subtlety. They use gambits. They use discovered attacks. They use forked attacks. They bluff. They, they deceive. They use every conceivable possible tactic ever imagined by any chess master in the history of the game. Because they are absolutely relentless and ruthless on the board. They are there to defeat us, period. That is how they help us. That is how they make us better. That is how they make us stronger. That's why we have to go down into the abyss. Because the abyss is their domain. The abyss is their turf. We are the uh, outsider when we descend into the abyss. We are the unwelcome one. We are outnumbered. We are outgunned. We are Frodo and Sam in Mordor. When we go into the abyss. And every piece on that board is 100% geared to our destruction. To our capture to our enslavement to our devolution because that's their divinely ordained purpose and they are mechanical they are machines they're like the terminator and it's like kyle reese tells sarah connor in the original terminator movie it 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 doesn't sleep it doesn't eat it has no remorse you can't reason with it you can't bargain with it and it will not stop until it fulfills its programming. That's what we're facing down in the abyss. So we cannot go down there armed with a machine mind alone. With our rational mind, we think we're going to we think we're going to conquer the forces of mechanical nature with this pathetic electrochemical computer? Is that, we, is that what we think we're going to do? Because a lot of people think that. They think just by thinking positive, they're going to overcome everything, right? They're going to positive think their way into, uh, into the golden age and into uh, the higher realms and into 5D ascension and all the other nonsense they talk about. It is, it, it is an absurdity. It would be hilariously laughable if it wasn't so tragic and so lamentable on so many different levels. These people who are so delusional. But that's how clever and insidious the ego mind is.